Good evening. I would like to welcome you in the name of Hoxt Wright to this webinar on best practice to set up and perform measurement with the new precision OCT I-STAR. I'd like to welcome everybody here online on this Hoxt Wright Focus event. Tonight, Abdul Shamal is going to be our host and he's going to talk about this brand new device featuring precision OCT, biometry measurements, topography, and much more one single fully automated measurement process. Shabdo <laughs> Shamal, sorry for that, has been in the field of thermology for more than 20 years. He has been working as a field technician and is now responsible for international sales with Hawk Stride. So Abdo, thank you very much for joining us and sharing your experience with the new device. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas, for this uh, nice introduction. I want also to say hello from my side and welcome to this uh, iStar webinar for technicians and distributors. My name is Abdo Jamal. I'm Hackstrike Area Sales Manager for Middle East and Africa. I will talk today about the best practice to set up and perform a measurement with iStar, the new precision OCT from Hackstrike. This webinar will be around 20 to 25 minutes long with available time in the end for Q&A. So if you have questions, please type them in the Q&A box and we will answer them at the end of the session. Please don't use the chat function. We are running several webinars this month about biometry and myopia. So if you would like to attend and you are not yet registered, please visit Hagstrai Diagnostics webpage for registration. We will post also the link for registration page during the webinar. Today, I would like to give you an idea about the iStar, how to set up the device, and how to perform an exam. And a brief idea about the result, because this, this subject will be discussed and tackled with more details in the coming webinars. So let's start. First. What is iStar? iStar is a swept source OCT eye analyzer. It enables the user to have precise, fully automated measurement of the eye. Of course, this measurement is used for a purpose. And our target is to use these measurements for anterior segment assessment, planning for cataract and refractive surgery. Now the device has a cataract suite, and soon we will add the anterior segment module to this cataract suite. This was addressed in detail during the iStar launch webinar last Thursday. So iStar has many benefits that help clinicians in their daily practice. What I can say in short, it is fully automated, swept sort technology and cataract suite at the moment. So fully automated, the measurement process is really fully automated. We will see this later on in our webinar. At the push of a button, the device takes over to automatically align and captures the measurements. These measurements are really quick and fast. It takes less than 40 seconds to measure both eyes, including the alignment. Of course, the quick measuring time provides high patient comfort. During the measuring time, the device collects two types of data, OCT data and keratometry data. Second, the iStar, as we said, is a swept source OCT designed for high precision measurements. What measurements the device provides? It provides type A, which is the highest norm of topography for anterior and posterior surface of the cornea. All the topography maps that you know are available. Pachymetry map, B scan images, A scan data, K reading, and Zernike high and low order abrasion. At all the mentioned values or all the, the measurements will be used 
for the surgical planning and IOL calculation. I-STAR, I cataract suite comes with the latest IOL calculation method, Hill RBF3, Barrett, Olson, and all the rest. So whatever method or formula you or your customers are using, it will be available. So with the, all the mentioned data set, the I-STAR is designed for various applications. Visualization of the anterior segment, corneal topography, biometry, IOL calculation, and surgical planning. So now let's have a quick look at the device itself. I think the device looks a bit different than what some of you might have seen when we first show it. Actually, the main changes is the colors of the covers. That's basically what, what we change. When we look at the device from the patient side, we see on the top the forehead rest band, the front illumination led to illuminate the eye, the oculars, adjustable chin rest, and hand grips. On the side, where is the touch screen, we see ventilation groove, device status indicator, and the touch screen. If you see the forehead rest band and the adjustable chin rest are in red, because these two items are consumables. And you can take them out, clean and disinfect them and put them back. Usually we recommend to use two sets of these. So it's practical to take, to change, to interchange between, between these two, two sets. If we look at the device from the other side, opposite to the patient side, there is a little cover. When we open the cover, we see this view. Actually, this site is only for the user and the service technician. It has nothing to do with the patient. We see here the main power connector, fuses, main switch, USB ports, LAN port, and external HDMI display port. If you want to have an external screen, then the touch screen, which is supplied with the device. On top, we see the power button. Now let's move to how to set up the I-STAR in a clinic. First, of course, we need a table. The I-STAR weighed around 31 kilograms with a dimension of 46, 39, or 55 centimeters. So we recommend a high quality table that support perfectly the device weight and dimension. Also, we you need up and down function and keyboard and mouse tray. This is the original Huckstrike table designed for iStar. But if you have another table that is like this, of course, it works perfectly. So it's your choice to select the original table or use a, a third party table that serves the same purpose. The iStar touch screen can be mounted on either side of the device or on its back. This makes it space saver and fit in any examination. This is how the device look on its, on its table. Second, what is important is the patient and user chairs. It's practical to use adjustable patient chair with wheels. Of course, fixed, wheel, uh, fixed chairs also works. And in this case, you might need to, to move the device itself to bring it uh, closer to the patient. Uh, use chair with a stability uh, 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 base. So it won't, uh, or it will prevent from any accidental rolling or disturbance. It might also be good to have wheels with locks. Anyway. You, uh, you use this on a daily practice, so you better know what I know about the chair and, and the stools. It's important for patient safety to have a stable and steady chairs. 
What is also help is to ask the patient to hold the hand grips when they are in a uh, measuring uh, uh, position. Now we'll walk through step by step process of the measuring measurement procedure. Make sure the device is connected to power and the main switch is turned on. Then click on the power switch to turn the device on. If the device doesn't turn on, please check the fuses, they might be burnt. Uh, once the device is turned on, it will initialize and we will have the eye suite uh, uh, screen on the touch screen. For people who never used iSuite, this is the main interface of the software where you see on the left side, the extension. Next to it is the patient list and then patient information as well as the examination information. Now, before we put the patient on the device, it's better to enter the patient data if the patient is new. So we have to prepare ourselves and the device before we put the patient in the measuring position. As we said, if the patient is new, we add new patient to the database. The green field is our mandatory, but I recommend that you fill all the fields uh, uh, when, when you enter the patient there. Don't forget to save before moving to the next step. If you have the patient already in your database, you can search by patient name or ID or whatever search uh, criteria you, you set. And then you select the patient or highlight the, the patient uh, uh, before moving to the next step. Uh, it's important that we explain the, the, the test to the patient. Patient will be able to co cooperate more effectively if they understand what they expect, what they are, what is expected. Uh, please take into consideration that the patient is nervous. He or she comes to the clinic with an eye situation or eye disease. They don't know what they will experience in front of the device. So explaining the test will be, I think, a relief for them. Provide them with some information about the test, like the test is fully automatic. Some parts are moving in the device. You don't need to worry. Always look at the fixation target light in the device. The fixation target is green color dot in the center. This green color dot will turn into red. Once you see the red light, please blink twice and open your eyes wide. The patient, of course, can blink anytime because the machine has a blink control, but it's always recommended if they can open their eyes wide during the test. Selecting the lens and the vitreous body also important. We have three options for lens selection. It's either natural or no lens or IOL implanted for the vitreous body, either natural or solid silicone oil fit. Don't worry if you forget this step. You always can go back here after the measurements and change it. So don't worry about this, this step. Now let's talk about the uh, uh, patient, correct and comfortable position in front of the device. First, adjust the patient chair so the patient is comfortable. Adjust the table level to fit the patient height. Always have the uh, patient higher a little bit than the ocular because the eye star have a leaning forward position it's around 15 degrees. It, it looks like the reading posture. This picture show, shows the correct patient position. 
this position is really comfortable for, for the patient and it will make his experience with the chin rest support really good. Uh, ask the patient to hold the hand grips to keep a steady uh, position. I, I repeat this step twice because we always concern about any, any accidental or, or rolling of, of, of the chair. Next, we click on the I star icon on the extension uh, uh, section, and then the device will take over and tracks the eye. All the time, the user can monitor the eye status from his screen. The fixation target is green on the user interface, as well it is green on the patient side. iStar automatically finds the OCT images. And then at this stage, the green fixation light will turn into red on both patient and user side. Uh, I think it's good here to ask the patient to blink twice and open the eyes wide. The measurement will start and we see two progression bars below the eye image one for topography and the other one for uh, keratometry. The topography means as well OCT data. First, the indicators are in black, then they change or might change to yellow, and finally, they will turn into green with the smiley faces. Yellow means the eye star has enough data to produce results but green with smiling face, faces mean the acquired data is of a good quality. In case you didn't get the smiley faces, you might need to repeat the test. Honestly, this is rarely happens. So uh, the device is reliable enough to take the measurement in, in most of, of, of the cases. What I want to show here a real-time video about the process that show the complete measuring time in a, uh, 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 the complete measuring process. Hello and welcome to the short uncut video on how to acquire measurement with the iStar 900 swept source OCT anterior chamber analyzer of Hawk Stride. I have Marcel here with me. He's going to be my patient tonight. You see the screen on the right hand side, you see Marcel and myself here uh, on the device and see everything is live on cut. So when I switch through the patients here, it also switches through the patients on the screen display on the right hand side. So when we set up the measurement, we simply first select the patient and then go to take a new measurement. The device starts itself up, takes test measurement internally and then goes to the overview page where we can set up the eye status of the patient. So we could basically switch from having a natural lens to no lens, an F-faking patient, or an IOL for a pseudo-faking patient. In Marcel's cases, we have twice natural lens. The next step is to get the patient seated. We have handles here to get the patient steady, chin rest, forehead band, which adapt nicely to the forehead. The patient looks now into the device and will see a fixation target when I go to next. Then the device immediately starts with the measurement, switches to the right eye and starts the measurement. We see the uplight image and you might have realized that the central target switched from green to red. This is also happening for the patient. So you can educate the patient to blink when the fixation target switches from green to red to acquire the image as quick as possible and also to make him the acquisition as comfortable as possible. We see that we also get an immediate feedback on the quality of the image. And we already acquired the data on both eyes and we can let the patient relax. As we go, we always have full control over what we get. So we have feedback on the tomography, which is the OCT signal 
contact keratometry, which is reflection-based keratometry for the cataract application. And now we already get the first results. So we have the topography mid of the anterior corner curvature. We have the section through the anterior chamber. We have the uplight image. We have the retinal signal. We have the keratometry. We have the axial length parameters. And as we speak here, everything is there, ready to go. And we can proceed with the IOL calculation or any other diagnostic mean. Thank you. So this is the short video that explains how the measurement process uh, is, is done. As you see, it's very fast, very easy, and the machine does everything by itself. After we finish the measurements, we have the preview of both eyes shown on the screen next to each other. This gives the user the ability to compare both eyes instantly. The preview also has the axial topography maps, reflective keratometry measurements, biometry measurements, eye images with white to white and pupil diameter, B scan images, and A scan profile. As I mentioned earlier, any time after taking the measurement, you can still change the lens and vitreous body types. You click on the edit button and you have this screen again. Whenever you change anything, the software will recalculate based on your selection and gives you the new uh, uh, result. If you want to have more details about any measurement, this is a very simple task. Just click where you want to have more details about the measurement and the software will take you there. So for example, we click on the keratometry and here we have the keratometry screen shows K1, K2 values with the axis, uh, the astigmatism. And also we see on the right bottom of the screen, we have few buttons that takes us to several uh, uh, details view of the results. If we go to the lens tilting button, then lens tilting uh, screen will be shown where the B scan of the maximum uh, lens or IOL tilt will be shown. The plane of the maximum tilt and the display of decentration of the lens or IOL with respect to the corneal apex. Next, we can click on the A, B scan. And here we see B scan image with A scan profile. You can verify the biometry result and change the gates if needed. Uh, uh, people who used to use the lens star, they are familiar with this gate uh, uh, movement uh, of, of the A, A scan. On the right hand side, we see the two arrows with, with also a, a, a play button. You can move between the 16 B scan uh, cuts, or you can play a, a movie that moves between these 16 uh, uh, cuts just for, for, for reviews, just for reviews. Accordingly, also the A scan profile will change based on the B scan cuts. Next, we go to the white uh, to white and pupil metry. Here we have the image of the white to white, the uh, uh, corneal diameter, the pupil diameter, and on top of that, we have the eccentricity data between visual optic line and center of the cornea. Uh, next, the topography interface where all topography maps for anterior and posterior surface are shown. Here we can see anterior uh, axial, uh, tangential, elevation maps, and pachymetry map. If you want to toggle between these maps, you just click on any, any map. This map will be highlighted and it will be shown in a bigger scale on, on, the, on the side. It's a, just 
click of F button. Last will be the Zernike high, or high and low order abrasion. Uh, a webinar about understanding topography and corneal abrasion will be held next Thursday. Dr. Warren Hill will talk in details about this subject. Again, if you would like to attend you are, and you are not yet registered, please visit Huckstride Diagnostic webpage for registration. Uh, on, on the bottom side, uh, bottom right side of the screen, uh, you see patient vision simulation tool. This tool helps to explain to the patient his or her eye condition. You can also change the, pa uh, the, uh, the pupil diameter for, for, for the simulation. Uh, back, it will bring us back to the main uh, uh, overview screen of the, measure, of, of the result. Uh, last, I will talk briefly about the IOL calculation options, uh, which also part of the cataract suite. Clicking on the IOL calculation extension will take us to the IOL calculation screen. Because iStar provides all the measurements we need to do any type of IOL calculation, so all the options are available. We can do single vision uh, calculation. We can do toric with the uh, option to customize the plan. For example, the toric planner gives you the chance to change the incision size, incision location, uh, toric power, and also add reference, reference points or, or landmark. Finally, you can plan for post-refractive uh, eye. You need the data for pre and post refractive uh, uh, surgery. It's also possible to have post refractive calculation without the history, but always with the history, the calculation will be more accurate. You can do post refractive for single or toric uh, 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 calculation. Just in brief, Measurements are better when the acquisition process is properly performed. ISTAR, with its fully automated measurement acquisition process, ensure short measurement time, best posi possible measurement quality, user patient comfort and pleasant experience. Nevertheless, having the patient in a correct and comfortable posture in front of the device with adequate education about the measurements process improve the quality of the measurements. I hope you have now few tips to acquire good quality measurements in a quickly and convenient way. I want to thank you for attending this webinar about performing measurements with ISTAR. And now we're open for any question and answer. Thank you very much, Otto, for this very nice presentation. We actually have got quite some questions, and I would like to throw them. Uh, Thomas, I cannot hear you clearly. Yes, no. sorry. <laughs> okay, it's, it's always okay. the microphone. I'm sorry about that. So, thank you very much for this very nice presentation, and uh, we actually do have quite some questions to to respond to. Um, the first question that came in was. Uh, is it possible also to take manual measurements instead of the automatic measurements that you just showed? That was yes. the first question. Yes, it is possible. Uh, uh, let me go back to one of the pictures. Sorry. Yeah, here you can click on position manually and do the, the uh, uh, and then click start and it will be uh, semi-manual measurements. Absolutely right. I may maybe add a little information about it. We did the C registration study in a university hospital environment. So usually there the patients are the more complex ones, the ones that uh, have more comorbidities. 
and uh, we did only have to do two measurements manually of the entire registration study. All the other measurements run smoothly and the feedback we got from early users, which we do have already in Swiss markets, is always that the measurement acquisition is really beautiful and nice that it works with almost any patient anytime. The next question we got from the audience is, how does it have TK details? I assume TK refers to total keratometry, uh, a trademark from a competing device. Yes, the, quest, the, the answer is yes. Uh, it has a total keratometry uh, because we have the anterior and posterior uh, corneal surface. So, and uh, we have also the Barrett TK formula including in, in, in the sweep. Thank you very much. Next question from the audience is, what is the additional information you we can get from ISTAR when compared to Lensar with the T-cone? Uh, actually, the, the posterior cornea, the Zernike uh, abrasion, the, the B-scan, uh, the fast uh, and automated uh, uh, measurements, I think there is a lot of uh, additional features that the ISTAR provides than, than uh, uh, Lenstar. Uh, uh, I, I want here to highlight that the iStar, it's totally a different machine than, than Lenstar. We shouldn't compare these two devices together. iStar is a complete eye, eye analyzer, where Lenstar is an optical biometer. Then we have the next question, uh, what's the analyzing time after the performance, after the test is performed? Uh, to be honest, I didn't measure the analyzing time uh, uh, accurately, but you saw the, the video and this video is a real time. So I think it, it might be 10 to 20 seconds. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure, I don't want to give uh, an answer, but you saw it. Mm. Uh, I, I might quickly kick yes, in here. So the, the complete analyzed analyzation time for the data after measurement is uh, below 40 seconds now. Um, the user that asked this question might have seen the device earlier at some shows where the analyze time was more than 12 minutes actually. And we could reduce it to less than 40 seconds right now. And we're still working to get it even below that. But what you've seen is that you immediately get feedback on the measurements you get, so you immediately know if a measurement is correct or not with smiling faces on the keratometry and the topography bars. And you also get the data on display as it's analyzed. So it's not that you wait 40 seconds and nothing happens, but you get it as it goes. Thank you, Thomas. Then the next question, which we have, um, can we modify, edit, White, white to white. White to white, yes. White yes. to white. Yes. 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 It's it's similar. Uh, if if you are a iSuite user and you use the uh, Lenstar, it's it's the same concept. Uh, so the answer is yes. You can modify uh, the white to white if it's not correctly aligned or measured. And another question we have is, uh, can we compare the iStar with the Pentacam? Actually, our aim is to do so. But as I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, uh, the anterior segment suite will come hopefully soon. At this stage, we can compare uh, these two, two devices. I think now uh, the the iStar is more a, a cataract suite, uh, more where the Pentacam is more than an uh, anterior segment analyzer at the moment. Perfect. Then we have the next question. Uh, can iStar penetrate in hard cataracts up to like grade five cataracts? Uh, actually, we are planning a study about this. Uh, in theory or in principle, it should, 
but uh, the study will prove our our expectations or or not. Uh, unfortunately, because the situation worldwide, this study is is delayed because of the corona situation. But we will do this study and uh, publish the result as soon as we have it. Yeah, I might also add a few lines here. I mean, the iStar is web source OCT, so it's based on the same technology like um, Acacia, like uh, Nylon Mod 700, like a mobile device. And we have seen several papers published on these web source based OCT devices. And they all showed superior cataract penetration as compared to standard biometers. So we assume based on this literature that the study, which was just announced by Opto, is going to show similar results because you're using the same technology as it's used with the other devices already published data. But as I said before, the study has not yet been performed, but it's on the way. It just takes yeah. a little bit longer because of the current situation, situation. with Corona. What I also would like to add here, uh, the swept source also it's uh, light based. So if there is no chance for penetration, then they, this is a limitation for any device. Absolutely right. It's, it's an optical biometer. Yes. <laughs> yes. Then um, the next question is uh, when it will be available in the Ukraine? I think Ukraine will be on the second uh, uh, phase, which uh, hopefully it will be uh, late summer, maybe aug uh, uh, August or early September. Okay. Then is the new iSuite Myopia module compatible with the iStar for Myopia it, management? It, it is, I think it is, it is com compatible, but it's an add-on add-on uh, uh, module. Correct. It's going to be compatible. Um, the data interface for the module is going to be available with the full release of iSuite. And from then on, it's also automatic. Then um, will you have ray tracing formulas? <laughs> Maybe I answer yes. on this one here. <laughs> So um, it's actually on our development list to have a ray tracing formula, but um, as you know, ray tracing formulas are a little bit more complex than the standard formula currently used. And still, that's something you want to do because ray tracing really offers advantages if you have the full information on the corner front and the corner back, as we do with the iStar. Therefore, ray tracing is something we're working on. It's going to be one of the future releases included with the device. Then, uh, another question is anterior imaging in iStar in comparison with Ontario and IOL Master 700. Uh, honestly, uh, imaging, it's, it's a kind of personal impression. So uh, I don't know if there is a kind of study to compare these three, three devices together. What I can assure you that the Three devices give a very good uh, anterior anterior segment or anterior chamber images. Maybe a little line I can add here from feedback we got from users. We definitely are providing a higher quality image than the IWL MOS 700. We're also providing uh, a wider image. Also with the anterior chamber switch, which is on the development and will feature the same hardware. So it's just another software package with the device. Um, we are also going to offer a custom A-scan um, tool that allows you to take A-scans everywhere in the scan volume. The scan volume is going to be as large as 18, diomet 18 millimeters diameter. And there you can basically then select radial scans, you can select uh, grid scans, whatever you want to have. It's going to be available there throughout the entire eye. And um, the anterior Topography suite is an extra suite that goes then also with some cost because that was also a question which was up there okay. and which you could answer immediately. I think this will, will address in, in uh, commercial maybe sessions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, another question I, uh, I got was um, 
is it actually possible to also connect to EMR systems? Yes, of course. All our devices are built on, on the same concept that is connected to EMR or connected to DICOM by, by any networkable. So uh, the, 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 the answer is yes. Okay. Then we have a question. Do you show standard deviations to the measurements? Uh, I think there is no standard deviation here in, in, in these measurements. Mm -hmm. I guess yeah. this question also arises from LensStar user because with this LensStar user, you have five repetitive right. measurements yeah. you do. And with the iStar, it's a one-shot measurement. I mean, in the background, we are taking multiple measurements and it's not only five like with the, the, the LensStar because the whole thing with OCT is much, much, much faster. And instead of providing standard deviations, we provide an online immediate feedback on the quality. You've seen this in the video presented by Opto, where you have the smiling faces, where you immediately see the quality of the data acquisition, and therefore the standard deviations are not necessary, basically. Okay, so I would like to thank you very much for your time, Opto, and for your great presentation. Thank you, Thomas. And for... also all the audience, thank you very much for being here with us. And we are looking forward to see you on the future events. Go to our webpage, look at the schedule which we have on and register for any event you would like to, to attend. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. All Thank you very much from my side and have a good evening.